Okay, so next one, let's look at clamp. So clamp is actually this word that I learned very recently. Uh, I guess maybe it's only used in programming. Let's actually look at this. I mean, clamp. Well, if you look, we look at this, so clamp is actually a tool, right? Like a, uh, ah, okay, 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 clamp. Sorry, sorry, this is the problem of not being a na native English speaker, but, but, but this thing is a clamp, right? Or I mean, all of these things are clamps, but uh, was there some ambiguity, right? So the person, da, 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 right? yeah, so I'm not actually sure what the etymology is of, of, of the word clamp. Anyways, let's, let's drop that and let's jump back to the specification. So, so clamp is, is a function that essentially, so it exists in, in many programming languages or people tend to call this thing clamp. This is why I thought it was interesting and why we started to look at what the, what the word actually means. But, but what clamp does is that it restricts a number to be within a range. And this is actually a pretty useful function. Like I found myself in, in uh, this scenario quite recently and this is uh, why I, I learned the word clamp. So what it does is that assuming that A is an orderable type, if you pass an A, this is a super funky type definition, like these are the kind of type definitions where you're like, whoa, okay, that doesn't really tell me a whole lot. But if you pass an A and then an A and then an A, you'll get back something of type A. And you're like, oh, okay, but that's not very helpful. But anyways, in terms of the types, of course, it's very helpful because then it essentially says that you need to pass something which is orderable, then something which is orderable, then something which is orderable, and you'll get back something which is orderable. Where orderable, a lot of the times, probably means a number. But interesting, Interestingly, we can also see that the documentation says that it also works for other ordered types such as strings and dates. And I think this is probably because, I mean, uh, as we talked about previously, I can't remember in, in, in which video or in regards to which function, but as we talked about previously, like, I mean, you can say, uh, is, is one greater than two and you'll get false, but you can also say is uh, a greater than b and you'll get false, right? So it's so like, uh, characters are ordered types, or, or sorry, I shouldn't say characters because it's actually strings, because we could say AA and uh, BB here, and that would also uh, be false. But but if we flip this, then uh, that would be true. Uh, but anyways, so, so clamp works not only on numbers, but actually on ordered types. But anyways, let, let's look at some of the examples here. So if the first thing we pass is one, the second thing 10, and the third thing negative five, then we'll get back one. If it's one, 10, and 15, we'll get 10 and if it's 1, 10 and 4, we'll get 4. So let's think about this. The definition is that it restricts the number to be within a range. So ah, so if you think about it, a range has two numbers or a range consists of two numbers and then we want to pass a number that needs to be constrained within that range. So two of these parameters has to be the, the, the range or has to represent the minimum and the maximum of the range and then one number has to be the number that we want to sort of clamp into that range. I guess that's the, that's the terminology. Or actually, I mean, if we think about it, maybe that's why it's called a clamp like it's two poor two parts moving yeah anyways let's think about that some other time so let's look at this here we get one okay probably so probably this is the minimum of the range this is the maximum and then this is the value so negative five is too small or like it's outside this range but it's outside in the negative sense like it's <laughs> lower than the range and then the minimum of the range so it's simply clamped into the minimum and then let's look if that holds here as well so here we get 10 back when we pass one and 10 and 15 right so here we have the opposite scenario where 15 is greater greater than 10 and 10 is the maximum of the range so thus we get back 10 and in this case we have 1 and 10 and 4 and then of course we get 4 right because the number we're passing is 4 the number we want to sort of clamp into that range is 4 but 4 is already within that range so we don't have to change 4 uh, in, in, in any particular way and so I, I mean there's not a lot of complication here I think you can see how that works so uh, let's let's not dig too much into that let's just make sure that we have this syntactically correct and then let's let's look at at a string since that I think that would probably be a bit more interesting so here we get one yeah again so now we just did their example right if I change the minimum to two we'll get two because negative five is outside the, the bounds of the range two oops, outside the bounds of the range two to ten uh, but it's outside in the in the negative end it's smaller than the range but let's actually let's think about this let's, let's try this out with strings I have no idea how this is going to work what if we say that the minimum character is A, the maximum character, no wait, the, the maximum character is C, and then we pass Z. I guess we would get C in that case, no? Yeah, that's actually pretty cool. So in that case we get C, and what if we pass B, then we should get B. Yep, 
So so I kept the console log of the first one, right? So now we have the second one. In the second one, we get B. And similarly, I mean, if I pass A, we should get A. But if I pass, yeah, I mean, any other number, E, let's say, we should still get C, right? Which is the maximum number, right? So here I got A. And of course, I can't try less than in the other end because A is the first character. But then I guess one question we need to ask ourselves is how does it how does it work with with the capital letters? Because probably it's about character codes, right? So every character has a character code, and then the comparison is not done done between strings. It's done between character, the numeric representation of that character, which means that probably capital A, capital B, and capital C are all consecutive numbers, and lowercase a lowercase b lowercase c are all consecutive numbers which means that comparing like you could think of them as two different sets of, of numbers or two separate lists of numbers so comparing like uppercase a with lowercase b will probably not yield the same result as, as comparing lowercase a with lowercase b but let's just try that out so, so we're restricting within the range uh, capital a actually i mean let's, let's do something more simple let's do lowercase a lowercase b and then or, or no wait uh, lowercase c and then we pass Pass uppercase B. Yes, yeah, so that gives us A. So this should tell us that the numeric code for, I mean, we get in the lower boundary, right? So that tells us that the numeric code for capital B is lower than uh, the numeric code for, for lowercase b and lowercase a and so forth. So if you think about it as like consecutively starting from the number zero, then all of the capital letters or all of the uppercase letters appear before we have all of the lowercase letters. So yeah, I mean, uh, if we would switch this for uh, capital A and then switch this for capital C, then of course now it would work as expected. Now we still have uh, a capital B. But I mean, so, so one needs to be a bit careful here because like if we have lowercase c here, here we probably have a huge range so if I pass capital Z that will probably pass yeah so we're making correct assumptions but uh, anyways I mean <laughs> this you can figure out is something completely different but uh, fairly interesting if you have something that's orderable you can clamp it within or clamp it into I guess that's the terminology like you can clamp it into some particular range you can restrict it into a particular range but without destroying the value if you have something which is already in that range so pretty useful, pretty useful. And of course, as you can see here, it's, it's automatically curried. So clearly we could have said, uh, we could have said uh, const f is r dot clamp uh, within, let's do numbers again, so 10 and 20, and then uh, we can so log f of 15, right? And then we can reuse this function, 15, 20. And you can see the, the first one is not clamped, the second one is clamped. Or actually, I mean, we don't know. I mean, if we do 22, uh, that's that's clamped down to 20. So then you could use this in, in, in a pipeline or a compose. Super useful. That's clamp. Let's move on to the next one.